Good evening and welcome to the September 28th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our, our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. I'd like to thank our staff, Dan, Alyssa, Josh, Mark, Lori, and Kristen for their continued support to this commission and their diligence assisting applicants. Uh, at the moment, we are missing Melissa. She's attending a class and she may come in late. We are, have a quorum, however, so we should, be, we should be fine. Remind you guys, commenting, I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time. And all votes have to be done by roll call. When I call your name, state your name and your vote. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function. At the appropriate time, they will be read into the record. A link and further instructions are located on the agenda. Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022 regarding COVID-19 allows for full public participation. Therefore, if you would like to be heard on a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I will call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled, be succinct and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes each. Regarding RDAs, as an applicant, you want to hear a negative determination as it allows you to move forward with your project without the necessity of a full notice of intent application. For the benefit of anyone waiting for a particular hearing and so that you're not waiting unnecessarily, the following hearing is expected to be continued. 27 Crosby Lane. First up is that request for a continuance under notice of intent. Michael and Dorley Bingham trustees, the Bingham Revocable Trust, 27 Crosby Lane, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to modify the structure of an existing dock. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting a continuance until November 2nd. So moved, Harlow Hawks. Third, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue this until November 2nd. There's no comments. We're voting. Betsy? I pulled her eye. Courtney? Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Hello, Hawks, aye. Steve? At night. It is unanimous with the existing quorum. It is continued until November 2nd. Next up, request for determination of applicability. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, there are two additional continuance requests. I apologize. Um, it's the two other, um, the two other continued hearings have also requested continuances. If you'd like to read those, I can give those dates to you now so nobody's waiting. Yeah, which ones are those? The, the other two continued. Um, one fifty one T ticket and eight thirty six Palmer. All right. Rip. All right. So. That's 11 to, all right. The next one seeking a continuance is Constance M. Ryan and Andrew Doyle, 151 T-Ticket Path, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to extend the existing revetment, construct access stairs and nourish the bank. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until October 26th. So move, Carolyn Hawks. For a second. All right, hold on. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until 1026. If there's no questions or comments, we're voting. Betsy. Well, I told her I. 
Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks aye. Steve. Patton aye. It is unanimous with the existing quorum. That hearing is continued until October 26. Next request for a continuance is AC Cape Cod LLC, care of Barrett Sutton, 836 Palmer Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to stabilize an eroding, I think this is supposed to say slope, with the construction of a retaining wall, connect an under drain system <laughs> to from the wall to an existing drainage system, conduct invasive species management, replant trees and restore disturbed areas. Yes, and Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until October 19th. So move, Carla Hawks. Second, Berg. All right. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until 1019. If there's no comments or questions. All right, we're voting. Betsy? Glad filter aye. Courtney? Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin? O'Brien aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks aye. Steve? And aye. All right, it is unanimous with the existing quorum. This hearing is continued until October 19th. Anything else, Mrs. Lincoln? No, Mr. Chairman, thank you. All right. Now, request for determination of applicability. Mr. First Chairman, up, Larry Moore. Point of order, did we do the minutes? We don't have them on the agenda, Courtney. I, they're on mine, that's why I asked. We can move the minutes to next week. Okay. It was a late addition, Jamie. Thank you, sorry. All right, we'll just move them over to next week. A late edition, I got it today. Whatever. I got one today too without minutes. Thank you. Don't look at me like that. No, it was a very late edition, so my apologies. And Courtney came in later and he got the updated one. We had Lori add them this afternoon. So we're just gonna move them over to next week. Okay. So, right. so maybe, right. maybe a point of order is into the works. maybe after a certain time it shouldn't be yeah. modified. I, I get it. All right. If everybody's okay, I'm going to move down the agenda that I was provided. You may do so, Mr. Chair. Appreciate that. I think we all have the uh, non bird edition. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for that backing. Special. We'll follow you, Jamie. I don't know. It doesn't I'll seem like shut it. up and be quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's start again. All right. Request for determination of applicability. Larry Moore, 232 Bayshore Drive, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct an Osprey pole. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Carlo Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. There's no co comments. All right, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up. Lancy Construction, 27 Massasoit Street, Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to remove a portion of the house, construct a porch and rent station, reconstruct the existing decks, reconfigure the steps to the deck, reset the patio and walkways, and add fill so that the patio and walkways are at or above elevation 12. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and bylaw resource area. Boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Carlo Hawk, second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. If there's no comments or questions, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. 
O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Steve? And I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Matthew Osborne, 111 Jericho Path, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to add a second floor to the existing house, reconstruct the rear of the existing garage in the same footprint. Relocate the existing grinder pump and install a second grinder pump. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard so move. And the question is floodplain? Yes. Thank you. Hello, Hawk, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. There's no comments or questions. We're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Third aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks, aye. Steve. Matt and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Thank you to the staff for their diligence in those. Next up, our request for hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Family Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. As a reminder, public commenting is limited to three minutes. So I encourage you to stay within the purview of this board, which are the rules and regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act, and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw and how they pertain to a particular application. The chair reserves the right to stop any commenting that is disparaging or inconsequential to the hearing. First up, Ari Sorokin, AMS Revocable Trust, 77 Fay Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct an elevated walkway and platform through the woodland Revegetate the existing path, conduct invasive species management and restoration, and vista prune according to FWR 10.18 10B. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Mike Porcelli and Teresa Sprague to present their project. Uh, Mr. Porcelli, you're up, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. For the record, Mike Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicants, along with Teresa Sprague from Blue Flax Design. With your permission, I'd like to share my screen. Yes, sir. We represent the applicant, Ari Sorokin, who owns the property at number 77 Fay Road. It is a uh, 80,000 square foot uh, lot. It has water frontage on Vineyard Sound. And the wetland resources of note are land under the ocean, land containing shellfish, coastal beach, coastal bank, which I have highlighted in green, uh, shaded in green. These are the areas that um, meet the definition because of their degree of slope and the fact that they're in a uh, flood hazard zone. These are these are the areas where that they that is met. And I've uh, identified the top of the coastal bank on both sides. And there's also land subject to coastal storm flowage, and that comes in the form of um, um, A E. 13, um, circling with my mouse. And then from this blue line, seaward is VE15. Uh, these wetland resources in this plan may be familiar to you. Um, we did apply a few years ago for a similar project. The project is a um, elevated walkway through the woodland um, from the house to uh, uh, make better access for um, passive recreational purposes out on the beach um, for the applicant and his family, including um, uh, one family member who's physically disabled 
and is unable to use the path that meanders through here. Um, the concept originally was to construct a elevated walkway similar to a dock walkway, but not a dock, to a point that uh, access was made down to the coastal beach. The original application that uh, included elevating the walkway beyond this point out to the stone, stone the landward side of the stone groin. Um, when we had proposed that project, there were issues and concerns raised by Conservation Commission staff and commissioners because a portion of the walkway was in a velocity zone and it would have was considered a structure and not approvable. Um, you issued a denial order of conditions for that. Um, some time's gone by and we're back. And I think we're back with what was recommended that we originally did not propose, which is an elevated walkway that meanders through the woodland, um, but it terminates landward of a velocity zone. And then it would simply be a path at grade through, through the woodland to the beach. Um, we've shown on here this label rollout path. And there was a, a question about that by, by uh, Alyssa on your staff about what that was. And I described it in, in back to her in an email. It's basically one of those um, flexible uh, wood lav um, rollout uh, paths that you might see accessing a beach through a dune, a public. And I think there's a couple in Falmouth actually on some of the public beaches to just make for a, better, a more stable uh, walk area to walk through the softer sand. Um, this is the same type of um, rollout path that could be simply rolled up and removed from the velocity zone if necessary. It, pro it goes through not so much a sandy beach, but it goes through uh, you know, the, the, the woodland uh, floor and it's not a, it's it provides for a little bit more stability um for access across um instead of just a uh a, a bumpy you know ground surface so that's the only part of the um project that has anything that's um you know man-made and that's a temporary thing just to facilitate access from the end of the ramp which is outside of the velocity zone the path will be uh, abandoned. It'll be replanted with native plantings. Um, there's also vista pruning proposed and some um, buffer restoration or and invasives management throughout this area. And all the details associated with that are on the plan by Blue Flax Design which uh, I will now turn over to Teresa to go over and then we're both available for questions. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Um, good evening, Teresa Sprague with Blue Flex Design. With the chair's permission, I'll share my screen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so this, as Mike pointed out, we had previously presented this management plan um, to you with the previous application. There's been no changes to the proposed management with the exception of the um, change to the rollout path, where previously the elevated boardwalk was being proposed to go over the existing um, understory vegetation, which was mainly um, black huckleberry and low bush blueberry throughout this area. Um, we did receive a, a comment from staff, and I didn't realize this. This was a uh, typo error on our part. There's still a note remaining from our previous plan regarding the 16 by 16 platform. So my apologies for that. I will be sure that that is removed and a new plan sent um, to you. So there is no platform proposed. You can see that on this plan that it's kind of pointing to nowhere. Um, so there's nothing like that proposed on this particular plan. So um, mainly the vegetation on the site is mainly native pitch pine oak overstory. Um, that's mostly um, native healthy vegetation, including uh, a maritime shrub, plant community, 
um, located throughout the site. Uh, there is a significant amount of greenbrier, which we were proposing to manage, not eradicate, but just manage to prevent it from um, overtaking other native vegetation. And in the areas where we had some significant and heavy um, greenbrier located throughout, we're proposing to replant that area with shrubs. Um, that's mainly located to the north of the proposed path. Along the southern portion of the property, there's a, uh, an existing footpath that's about 210 linear feet that we were proposing to infill and restore um, as that path will no longer be used or needed with the new proposed boardwalk running down the center of the property. Um, in addition to that, we're proposing to continue to manage. There's, there was an existing Vista corridor um, that had been managed by previous uh, property owners historically. We were proposing to maintain that 25-foot wide um, Vista corridor. The boardwalk runs down the center of that. Um, there were a number of stumped trees, including 12 oak trees and one cedar tree that had been topped that we were proposing to um, remove and replace two to one with additional shrubs, which are also showing um, planted throughout that area. So there were eight um, stumped trees that in the greater than three inch diameter range and five saplings, so three inch diameter or less. Um, and that included 12 oaks and one cedar, as I just pointed out. Um, so we are proposing to remove them. They had been cut, topped, um, they're poorly formed, um, and we were replacing those two to one with native shrubs. Um, in all, we're proposing to replant 144 shrubs and two understory trees, um, basically building upon the existing plant community that's located throughout the area. So that's arrowwood viburnum, bayberry, winterberry holly, inkberry holly, black huckleberry, and clethora. Um, with two um, amelanchiers that are being proposed um, for planting on the mid and then eastern portion of the of the property. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions about the proposed restoration. Of course, Vista management will um, will be completed per the Falmouth Vista pruning regulations. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Jen, would you like to start? You're on mute. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Give you that look again. Um, hi, Teresa, hi, Mike. Mike, you have the same um, yep. note about the platform? Yep, it's my fault, because um, Teresa used my plan. So she, the mistake translated over to her. It's a leftover from the original design. I'll, I'll remove it from my plan as well. OK, thank you. Um, Thank you for proposing, uh, more, explaining more of the rollout path. So, I mean, so it's going to be rolled. It's not going to be like um, a structure down there at ground level. Okay, perfect. Nope. Um, and the only other thing is we can support the removal of the trees within the view corridor, um, but the board can decide if you want the additional, if you would allow the additional trees to, to be removed. Um, but we can support the ones in that traditional view corridor. And I think there was what, two of them in there, Teresa? I think there's like two. Let me double check, but I think so. <clears throat> yes, so there are, there were some just outside of the view corridor, that's correct. Um, there were seven outside of the view corridor, so, mm -hmm. and seven stumped oaks and one top, topped cedar that are just outside of the view corridor, just to the north of the proposed view. Mm -hmm. So we can support the ones in the view corridor. Okay. But the board can decide what they want to do with the other seven that you were just talking about. Okay. Just for clarification on like future plans. Your shrub icons, that's where they're going to go after you remove the green briar, correct? Correct. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, that's all we have. I think, um, as Mike said, the I reread the board's denial um, order of conditions on the original um, proposal that seems to, to address the concerns the commission and the staff had at that time. That's all, Mr. Chairman, unless Alyssa has anything to add. Ms. Bergeron. All of our questions have been answered, so thank you. All right. Commissioner Coleman, Betsy. 
I do believe it was Jen's suggestion the first time this came around to have that uh, rollout. And I, and I also believe that all of our public beaches have that available, those rollout mats. Mm -hmm. um, this is good. Thanks for, well, I mean, they didn't have a choice of going ahead with the other plan. <laughs> <laughs> but working with staff and and this, uh, well, this, well done we're back with a little humility ah, it's all good all right that's you good yep i'm good all right courtney no comments it's a nice project okay, okay. all right kevin uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. It uh, seems a very good project. Yeah. Maury. I'm glad they came back with what we had pretty much recommended, but um, I think that the seven trees should be replanted with trees. Um, it just actually extends the view corridor to a 35 foot view corridor instead of 25 foot. And shrubbery is not a good replacement for what would be oaks and cedars. Other than that, it's a good project. All right, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, another beautiful place. And uh, the plan is a little hard to follow from the beach side, trying to figure out where this <laughs> pass is going to go. But uh, it, it'll be quite a project, I think, to put it in there. And uh, I got a new term, historically cut trees. So I looked it up. It doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you were saying and, and I agree. So thank you. Comments are always amazing from the staff. <laughs> All right. Mike, how was the what's the proposal for the, the methodology? Uh, there, there's two um, possible cross sections we're looking at. One would be with helical anchors. Oh, I got to share my screen. I'm sorry. I'm That's all right. pointing at it. Uh, one method would be helical anchors. The alternative would be uh, four by four posts that are augered. Um, the access, if the helicals, either way, whether it's helicals or augered, there's a, there's a access way around the house outside jurisdiction that comes down through here that a mini excavator could make its way down here with a with an attachment and do the installation of the um, anchors, the posts or the uh, or the helicals. And then once they're installed, it's pretty much standard framing for like a walkway that would all, you know all be done by you know you know hand labor. And that's pretty much it. I was looking to see how you're going to, how you plan to dig those. Yeah. All right. All right, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Um, nothing in the chat, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Betsy, you have a comment? I, I have two comments. One is <laughs> with the hill. Well, with either, are you worried about running into rocks? <laughs> yeah. Um, if we hit any stones, the the uh, setting might have to be adjusted, and the spacing between sections may be a little different. But we'll have to kind of just play it by air in the field as we install them. Depends how deep the rocks are and how big they are. Okay. And and the other comment was just that that I I agree. Maury, um, I like obviously like woody shrubs, but I like the I like the function of trees mm -hmm. in an area better. And we'll discuss. We can discuss that. All right. Any other comments or questions? My only my only question was about the helicals. That's really bony soil down there. I wonder how. Right. You're going to work with those. Right. As long as you're, as long as we're permitting the alternative that you have to dig them, that's, that's fair. Right. right. All right. Michael, do you have anything? Do you have anything else to add? 
No? All right. Yes, Betsy. Okay, I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. If there's no other comments or questions. All right, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Thank Teresa. You. Thank you. Next up, <clears throat> Allison and William Man. I'm sorry if I get this wrong. Mankovisky, Allison Mankovisky Trust, 210 Quisset Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to relocate the septic tank, remove the existing deck and porches, and construct a new deck and porches, and augment the foundation where the deck is enlarged. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Barcelli is here to present his project. All right, welcome back, Mike. Th thank you again, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. For the record, Mike Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant. The property is located at 210 Quisset Avenue. Uh, access is via a common driveway that meanders through past um, one home. Uh, Excuse me, Mike, you're not sharing yet. Yeah. I don't know if you intended to. Just no. throw it out there. It's a little rusty, I guess, again tonight. So, yeah. so the common driveway makes its way from the formal Quisset Avenue by one dwelling that was originally developed at the same time as this dwelling. Um, and access is through a driveway here. The property is uh, situated on a, um, a, a flat a plateau area that is adjacent to a non-eroding coastal bank on this side and it wraps around over on this side. At the base of or toe of this coastal bank is a small uh, fish pond that was a landscape feature. Um, it's lily pond, uh, there's koi in it, or there's some fish in it that are either goldfish or koi or a combination. Um, it was part of the, the original state when there was only one house here. Um, on this side at the base of the coastal bank is the salt marsh. And some of you may be familiar with beyond the salt marsh out further out here is a, an ancient cedar swamp, which is kind of an interesting feature. Um, I, I permitted the original house on this property in the mid 90s, seems like yesterday. Um, the <laughs> property sold, um, the new owners, the applicant tonight are doing interior renovations and they wanted to basically kind of spruce it up and rebuild the front porch and the wraparound deck. Um, it's starting to get in need of maintenance and it made more sense to just rebuild it with new materials in their uh, opinion. There's tiny little square off, if you were at the site, this one little corner was a 45 degree angle and it um, is just being squared off because it was wasted space. It actually technically doesn't go closer to the wetland resource because the closest point is is here. Um, and then there was a funny jog in the deck. Uh, this is like a walkout, by the way. So this deck level is one le story up. Um, the ground is underneath it. You know, you can stand under it. Um, the basement level is underneath this. Um, this little area here is new deck and that little corner is new deck. Um, but, but they're removing a section of a wraparound porch here when they rebuild this new porch. So there's no net increase in impervious surfaces. So there's no requirement for mitigation. I almost applied for a RDA, but I thought it was a little bit too much for an RDA. 
Um, I'm proposing a limit of work along the edge of the existing uh, tree line. So there's no clearing, no cutting um, of anything. This is lawn and landscape from the original um, house when it was constructed. And that, that sums it up. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Mike. Ken. Mike, where you're squaring that deck off on the back side, it's not moving closer to that coastal bank, is it? No. Um, it looks like the bank bends in that area, but you didn't give me a shot over there, so. Yeah, I can zoom in, but um, the closest point to the coastal bank is right where the word of is. From here straight yeah. on is closer than this square off would be to over here. I'm talking about the other side where it looks like you're going or yeah, over right here. There. Yeah. Same thing. You can see how that kind of meanders along the contour. Yeah. So that section there doesn't get closer and it actually gets built. It's up in the air one story. There's a landscape wall that it's going to get built on top of that already exists. Okay. But in the future, kind of put those shots on the plan so it's really clear. Yeah, I understand. I'm yeah. happy to give you a revised plan if you want one. I don't think it's necessary, but like I said, in the future, just make sure that yep. you have your closest point and then you really make it clear that you're not moving closer on that other point. Understood. And ignore my comments about the land under ocean. When I zoomed into the, I couldn't even remember, I couldn't remember the site. And when I zoomed over, I quickly put on like um, the area layer. I'm like, that's not a pond. That's part of Quisset Harbor, but I didn't see the tiny little pond. I thought that was woods over there. Yeah, it's not when I turn off the aerial, then I see it in blue, and I was like, "Oh, weird." Yeah, but I just saw that. Yeah, um, that marsh creeps up in there. Is that salt marsh up in there? No. Yep, there is a salt marsh to the south um, side. Okay. Southwest side. All right, perfect. I show the no disturbance zone A's and yeah. And okay. Yeah. In. No, I think that's all I had. Mr. Chairman, unless Alyssa has anything to add, this is pretty straightforward. Um, we just had one other comment, Mike. I know that you said the septic tank was going to be relocated. Can you show us where on the plan it will be relocated to? Oh, I'm, if I said that, it was a mistake. Um, oh, okay. I'll, I'll show you quickly one once again. The, the um, existing septic tank is right here. Um, if I had said this tank was to be relocated, that was a mistake because this, it would only have to be really relocated if it was less than 10 feet from a foundation. And this is a sauna tube supported porch. It is less than 10 feet, but there's no setback for a sauna tube supported porch. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. Uh, that's all I have. All right. Commissioner comments, Steve. No, Mr. Chairman, I didn't have any comments. I, I thought uh, it was a reasonable approach. When I first saw the site and all the construction going on, I thought I was at the wrong place, but yeah, I didn't think the change in the deck was significant. Thank you. Sure. Maury. Um, the only question I had, well, a comment was that they're actually reducing um, structure because the steps on that porch, I think you're losing like four steps. So, yeah, yeah, yeah right. good project. I remember this one. You've done a nice yeah. job there. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. A nice project. It was a nice project. All right, Courtney. No comments. Betsy. No questions or comments. Thanks. Wow. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Then I'll propose a motion Excellent. to close the, close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right, are there any other comments or questions from anyone? All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing or voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Steve. 
Aye. 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 It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Borselli. Thank you. Have a good evening. Night, Mike. Good night. Night, night, Mike. Good night. All right. Next up, <clears throat> Matthew Waldrop, NSTAR Electric Company, DBA, Eversource Energy, Mill Road, right of way, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to install a fifth submarine distribution cable between Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard to improve reliability of grid-based electricity on Martha's Vineyard. The project consists of installing approximately 2.32 miles of new underground duct and a manhole system from the existing Eversource substation, number 933, off Stevens Lane to the intersection of Surf Drive and Mill Road. The cable will also be installed in approximately 0.38 miles of existing conduit in Surf Drive to the intersection of Surf Drive and Shore Street. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am promoting Matthew Wal Waldrop up. Oh, here he comes, and Dwight Dunk from Epsilon Associates to present their project. Excellent. Yes. Um, good evening. This is Dwight Dunk with Epsilon Associates. Unfortunately, I it appear to be having a problem with my camera. <laughs> it's not uh, recognizing my um, my vid my camera here. So uh, sorry about that. Um, but hopefully, you can hear me okay. Yes. Okay, great. Um, uh, Jennifer, if it's okay, I'll share my screen. Yes, please. Great. Great. Can everybody see the see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Um, as you mentioned with the agenda, um, we're here for the notice of intent for the Falmouth for the Martha's Vineyard Reliability Project. This is the Falmouth landside route segment of that project, um, DEP file number SE 254790. Um, one administrative item, uh, Jennifer, I just want to confirm that you received the proof of abutters notifications and copies of the green cards that my um, colleague emailed to, to your office yesterday. Uh, I believe we did. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, the, um, this segment of the project in, uh, involves the uh, con constructing the land side or terrestrial cable from the uh, Eversource substation up off of Stevens Street, down Stevens Street, and then over to the bike path, along the bike path, down Mill Road, um, and then um, it will utilize the existing duct that's in Surf Drive. There's about 100 feet of new duct that will be in uh, Surf Drive right at the intersection of Mill Road. So that's the whole um, underground uh, duct and manhole system for the new cable. In terms of work that's subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and the bylaw, it um, in, is limited to the work within floodplain um, that extends along Mill Road and across uh, surf drive as well as buffer zone to resource areas um, adjacent. Um, the work within the within the uh, the wetland resource areas within the project area, um, starting from the ocean, obviously the land under ocean. There's beach, dune, um, uh, lands of coastal storm flowage, and then with salt pond, we have um, the land under salt ponds. Uh, border and vegetative wetland and inland bank uh, along the pond. And then, you know, some of the other resource areas are land containing shellfish, with, with, which is out in the sound, and land subject to tidal action. Uh, the wetland resource areas, the um, FEMA designated floodplain extends well up on Mill Road. So it's this portion of the project that's within floodplain. Um, 
is shown in figure four, um, the various 12 sheets that show the entire project as we get down into sheets nine through 12. Um, this just shows the Bill Road, which is the work area identified in yellow. We have the Inland Bank that's along the pond and then the Honeyfoot Buffer Zone in the, in the town's buffer um, as well. And then the 100-year floodplain. Um, as we continue down Mill Road, um, <coughs> the floodplain buffer, et cetera, uh, meanders, but we assumed all of the, uh, you know, most of the project is within the 100-year floodplain as LSCSF. Um, as we get down to the Surf Drive intersection, again, the, the new duct system will come all the way down to Mill Road, and the new duct will extend to about these um, driveways here and then then from this point it will the new cable will be installed in the existing duct that's in surf drive the um, wetland resource areas were de delineated in the field um, figure 10 shows the wetland flags for the bbw along salt pond uh, by the parking lot as well as the inland bank that extends uh, further north we have beach and we delineated and located by GPS the edge of the dune, which is, you know, right along the shoulder of the road of Surf Drive. Um, the boundaries of the dune are pretty much coincident with the dune that was delineated for the cable that was constructed circa 2014 um, as SE uh, 253889. And then again, you know, extending um, over to the surf drive uh, parking lot, uh, the new cable will be installed in here, but there's no duct work, there's no excavation um, or anything like that for this segment of the project. Um, uh, yeah, the natural heritage estimated the habitats. We have estimated the habitat out in the sound, coordination with natural heritage for uh, the MEPA review is mainly shorebirds, um, piping plovers, terns. The project itself is just outside the limit of the mapped ha uh, polygon for the habitat. It's within the road. Um, also uh, in, in accordance with the uh, Division of Fish and Wildlife um, regulations, it is exempt from their review per 321 CMR 1014-6, uh, which includes construction of utility lines within existing paved areas um, with no expansion of the, of the pavement. So since all the work in Mill Road and just coming down to about this point for the new cave, for the new duct um, is all within existing road, it is exempt from their review. Um, the, this is a traditional utility project that I'm sure you're used to seeing, um, you know, for water, drainage, sewer. This is an under, underground duct system. Um, so it will involve the same type of construction techniques. Um, cut the pavement, excavate the trench, um, install the duct and manholes, backfill the trench, um, um, pave it. By here, we would have the extra um, step that um, at a future date, then the cable itself will be strung by opening up the manholes and then stringing the cable through the manhole system. Um, this project will um, involve work within 14,500 square feet of land subject coastal storm flowage, all within Mill Road and that little um, segment of Surf Drive, about 1,300 square feet for the six manholes and 13. 1,200 uh, square feet for the duct bank. Um, here it's you know traditional um, construction period mitigation measures. Um, Eversource does have a manual for all their contractors to follow. Uh, so the typical measures will be implemented, such as um, perimeter sedimentation controls, catch basin inlet protection, uh, if there's any need for trench deep watering, filtering that uh, prior to discharge. And um, this project will involve a uh, EPA 
uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan that will be prepared um, for the project that has not been prepared yet. And that will provide greater detail on the construction period, erosion, and sedimentation control. Um, I won't go through the long <laughs> review of compliance with the regulations. That's presented in section five of the project narrative, um, which is attachment um, A of the uh, notice of intent, but we've demonstrated compliance with the Wetlands Protection Act regulations and the Falmouth Wetland Regulations. Uh, where work is within LSCSF and the project will involve no change um, in surface topography, no filling, no structures. Um, there'll be no change in the horizontal or vertical extent of flooding. Um, it will not cause any redirection of flood flows or change uh, flood water velocities. So, in, you know, um, in terms of the regulations and, and the act and the bylaw, it does protect the interests of storm damage prevention and flood control. Um, also, the work in buffer zones, this is, uh, you know, the same work uh, with the mitigation measures um, are proposed to make sure there's no alteration of those associated uh, proximate wetland resource areas. Um, this is was also filed as a limited project, but we think the project meets all of the standards, uh, applicable standards for LSDSF in the buffer zone. Um, as you know, uh, or you may know, this is part of the full Martha's Vineyard uh, MVRP, or Martha's Vineyard Reliability Project, um, which also will include the cross uh, Vineyard Sound submarine cable. So there's plenty of permitting left to do for that segment of the project. It's currently in MEPA review um, and the development of regional impact application been submitted to the Cape Cod Commission. Um, and then we have plenty of other permits such as the Army Corps of Engineers, um, CCM consistency, a chapter 91 license, water quality certification, et cetera. But those are all for the submarine cable. Um, overall, the project benefit um, beyond meeting the project need um, is that it will, um, you know, most of these benefits are uh, accrued over on the island. However, it uh, will better enable um, the integration of uh, distributed renewable power on the vineyard. Um, after the fifth cable is installed, there are five on-island diesel generators that can be decommissioned. Um, as part of this project, the Shining Sea Bikeway will be widened, which will improve uh, the recreational um, opportunities for the uh, residents and visitors. And 15 utility poles along Palmer Ave will be relocated uh, again to improve pedestrian passage. Um, we appreciate that staff forwarded the comments to us. The, the three comments that were forwarded is, um, has the Division of Fish and Wildlife comments been provided, and we haven't received any comments. As I noted, um, the work is just outside their habitat, and it is a uh, exempt from. Uh, their review because it's a utility with an existing paved road. Um, will staging take place? Yes, uh, there will be staging. In the area of floodplain um, and along the coast, um, we expect staging um, to occur in, mill, in the Mill Road parking lot and the shore um, slash surf drive parking lot. Um, outside of those areas that are subject to uh, the commission's review, um, Eversource is, has made agreements to use the Depot Street parking lot and is uh, working with the Steamship Authority for staging in the Steamship Authority parking lot near the along the, the bikeway. And uh, the DEP file number, as noted, has been issued. It was issued this morning. Um, in closing, we uh, I think this is in terms of... Um, the Wetlands Protection Act and the bylaw. It's um, a fairly straightforward project of work in the temporary alteration of floodplain to install the underground utility. Um, it's all within the paved road, which will be restored. Uh, the same goes for the work in the buffer zone. And the BMPs will be installed to um, protect the receiving waters in wetlands. Uh, with that, we respectfully request the order of conditions for the project. Um, with you know pragmatic special conditions um, 
to uh, you know, that you apply to the project to protect the resource areas in the interest. And with that, I'll open it up to questions. Hey, Dwight, you can stop sharing, please. Okay, great. But don't be surprised if we ask you to bring something back up. Sure. All right. Matthew, do you have anything to add at this point? Uh, just Mr. Chairman, I will say, well, let me turn on my camera. Uh, I think Dwight covered it uh, pretty much fully from a technical perspective. I will say that a lot of uh, all, well, actually, I should identify myself first. I'm Matt Waldrop. I'm with Eversources Permitting Group, and uh, I, I signed the applicant's form. Uh, myself and a lot of the other folks that work for Eversource have met uh, very regularly with the other elected um, and appointed town officials. And the route that was selected was selected um, in agreement with the town. And a lot of the mitigation that uh, we agreed to was discussed prior with the town. Uh, the construction work, I'm not sure if Dwight mentioned this or not, but none of the construction will be taking place between the busiest season in Falmouth uh, between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Um, so I just wanted to add that. Thank you. All right. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, it is fairly straightforward. They only have one concern, and that is the presence of the plovers on Surf Drive. And I know, Dwight, that you say it's outside the, 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 the their mapped area. Um, but that is a concern. You said no work between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Correct. That's okay, correct. so if we put a condition, if the board wants to put a condition to have a monitor out there, just when you're in the vicinity of Surf Drive, um, would that be a problem? Because it's your project, unfortunately, is not exempt under our local regs when it comes to rare species. So um, I understand you'll be filing a formal MISA filing for the underwater portion of it, but I'm assuming not for the land portion of it, correct? Correct. And, and um, the um, piping plovers and terns, I think their nesting season is generally May 1 to, you know, August 31st or so. Um, it, it, um, aligns pretty well with the um April know, 1st with April 1st okay it's yeah. I, it's been a while since I looked at it for some yeah, other so, for some other projects but yeah um, I, I think that condition um, would be acceptable uh, the, the you know in as part of the um, SWIP there will be an environmental monitor okay uh, you know, out, out of, on the site. And well, you probably so. have to probably have to contract with Mass Audubon since they're out there anyway. Um, but we can we can work with you on that going forward. Yeah, I, I think you know during during the nesting season that makes sense if we're outside of the typical time of year restriction um, season. I, I don't think that the monitor would be required. Would that monitoring outside, be something that outside the typical nesting season, the monitor will not be required. But if you're inside yeah. that nesting season, April 1st, to August 31st, yeah. then I, I will have them required because okay. I never know where they're going to end up out there, Dwight. They've yeah. run the entire length <laughs> of that. Sure. No, no, I, no. I, it's such a pleasant surprise and where they decide to nest and yeah. what they decide to do. And um, so they, they make our life a little challenging down there early in the season. So don't be surprised to see a condition to have it monitored okay. just to protect our bylaw, um, our bylaw rare species clause. Okay. Yes. In, in the work we've done in other towns in the Cape, that's been a condition that we've accepted yeah. before. So I don't see any. Yeah. Any and I think that was the only real thing we, we really had. I mean, like it's a fairly straightforward project. It's in the road. It's just. Again, I never know when those, I call them puff balls, are going to show up and what they're doing. <laughs> so if somebody's out there monitoring them while you guys are out there, that's fine. Great. Okay. That's it, unless Alyssa has anything to add. Ms. Bergeron. None at this time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Commissioner comments. Maury.
You're muted. You're still muted. Sorry, my thing wasn't working. Um, I only the only question I had, the others were all answered. Um, in the staging areas, which are all in B zones, um, do you have a plan if you know severe winter storms come? Um, we've seen this over at Chappie when they've staged in that parking lot where stuff starts to leave. And I just want to make sure that there's a plan in place that if a winter storm is predicted that you are able to remove certain, you know, like the equipment and all that sort of stuff um, and have some sort of plan in place. Yes, we can um, add that to the, um, to the, you know, contractors uh, plan of work to well, you know, well, monitor, well, well, monitor for, um, you know, monitor for weather and predicted um, extreme flooding events and then, um, you know, remove uh, equipment materials that uh, you know could cause storm damage or what, you know, what's going to be in there what are you going to store there or stage matt what yeah, what would I, that I be can, for i can speak to some of that so we'd have the, the equipment needed for the construction which would be um you know it could be material uh some some pipe conduit uh excavators uh maybe hdd equipment uh we we would leave it there if there was uh some type of expected severe storm like 100 year storm or something even maybe less intense than that we would we would monitor the weather if there was going to be some type of flooding in the area any equipment that we could move and materials that we could move to you know some other service center or an area work center we would move that off site uh, if there was stationary equipment for instance uh things like like maybe an hdd rig or a drill rig that couldn't be moved we would we would propose to keep that on site but then add containment around it just to make sure that you know any material from the equipment would be contained in the containment, but we would uh, actively monitor the area for severe weather and knock on wood. Hopefully, we won't uh, get anything that will need us to move yeah. the equipment. Yeah, just, just one clarification there, Matt. This this aspect of the project doesn't include the HDD or anything yet, so it's just okay, the, thank you. It's just the traditional trenching. So, um, you know excavators equipment materials but um, as as we identified there are some other staging areas included so i think you know that are outside the 100 year flood plain um you know up by the steamship authority and, and whatnot so i think materials and uh, equipment could be relocated and so you know it, uh, having the contractor monitor the weather and plan accordingly for any predicted flooding events Sure. I'm sure they'll want to protect their equipment anyway. They don't really want to destroy it in salt water. Right. Um, right. Usually, we have you know on site that you have um, containment booms or or pillows in case there's a spill. That's usually standard, Jen. Right? Um, you know, vegetable oil and all that. So, okay. Thank you very much. And how long will this project take? Yeah. Pr presently, we're looking at about a, a two construction season. Um, it's, they, it, we're looking to start the work ahead of the submarine cable work, um, just because of the, you know, with no work during the uh, summer months, you know, Memorial Day to Labor Day, um, it, you know, will probably extend over a cut, two construction seasons. Thank you. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, but I don't have any questions. All right. Betsy. My questions were the same as Maury's, um, but uh, I think one of the special, I, I, all the things you said you would do if there was a storm, that's fine, but I think it would be nice to have that written in a document so that you don't have to start thinking about things, you know, like a hurricane plan. <laughs> and, and that could be it. That could be, you know, turned in as a, as a special condition. We would gladly accept that, and it's in our interest as well. Right, right. But I can tell you, we're all aware of hurricanes right now, right? <laughs> and having gone through two two Category Four hurricanes in the Virgin Islands, it's nice to have a piece of paper to see, you know, forty eight hours out, twenty four hours out, twelve hours out, what things you should be doing. So, yes, ma'am. Yep. Totally agree. 
Good. Yep. Oh, can I? Uh, one other question. This so this is a this is to have redundancy to to get electricity over to the to the vineyard, right? It, is there a problem with putting both lines in the same duct? Yeah. Th this is um, this fifth cable is is more than just redundancy. It's actually to accommodate the peak demand over on the over on the vineyard. Um, you know, presently, uh, it, Matt could probably go into more detail, but presently with the four cables um, over to the vineyard, um, should one of those, they're about um, 45 um, of megawatts and combined, and the peak demand is about 65. So, you know, there really needs to be the fifth cable just to carry it to, uh, for the demand. So it's, it's peak demand as well as resiliency and, and redundancy. Um, in terms of the duct, um, the duct, as you can see on the detail, has it's a duct and it has many ports in it. So it can accommodate multiple cables within the underground duct. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's why the surf drive does not need a new duct. Um, the, the fifth cable can be installed within that existing duct in surf drive. Yeah, and I guess in Mill, I guess in Mill what, Road, multiple cables can be installed in that duct once it's in, I, once it's in place. I guess my concern is if there were a major storm that washed out the sand underneath that that duct and broke that duct, that it, you know, for real resiliency, it would be better to have two separate pathways. Not, not that they both couldn't break. Yeah. Well, just um, uh, uh, Commissioner Gladfelder, just to let you know, the part of the uh, one of the um, items to be addressed in the um, through MEPA is to look at the resiliency and the um, storm damage, uh, the erosion, you know, the storm erosion um, along the shoreline there to evaluate, you know, what that would do for this cable. And for the duct, so that is being evaluated through the MEPA process. Okay, good. Thanks. You're welcome, Courtney. Um, I'll echo um, Bessie's comments about the redundancy. I would want to make. I would like to see <clears throat> multiple ducts, just simply because of it as a fail-safe thing. That's based on 30 years of construction and knowing when things can go wrong, they do. Um, my other question um, is, are you planning when you, well, two things, the bike path where you're reconstructing it, during your reconstruction essentially will be closed, correct? Matt, I, I believe it will be during the construction period, at least during active construction with some bypass. Okay, so yes. it, won't be, it won't be available for public. In other words, basically you're gonna tear up the whole bike path, the whole width, so it's, not going to be used by the public while you're constructing, correct? It will be closed during construction. Yeah. Second question is when you um, re, re put everything back together, are you going to put root barriers in on either side of the, because that, that area that you're working in um, is a real problem with black locusts. And um, I, I think it would be prudent for you to install root barriers along the sides of the pavement when you do it. And that would be just to prevent any root material from growing into the path. Yeah, what happens is it'll run, it runs under the pavement and heaves the pavement. You, 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 might, you might talk to people <clears throat> in DPW who work with the bike committee, because that's a major problem uh, along yes. the bike path. It and is. so if you're going to dig it up anyway, if there could be a better solution, <clears throat> let's, let's get it all done at once. Sure. No, understood. And I know the folks that I mentioned when I made my comments at the beginning, our community relations folks and our rights and survey folks and our arborists are all working with the DPW on that. So that's something we can certainly discuss with them. Okay, that'd be great. We'll take a note of that and bring that back to the company. We'd love to have that problem solved. Yeah, I, I mean, we'd like to make it a condition, frankly. <coughs> well, oh, it's not... It's yeah, no, I think except it it's be. not in our jurisdiction, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Well, no, it's quality. But if we could, we would. 
Anyway. <laughs> well, Courtney, I'll definitely take that back to the company. I know it's, we have several folks that live in town too that probably share your concerns. So it's good community relations at any rate. <laughs> Thank you. Courtney, you said questions. All right. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Would you like a motion, Jamie? Uh, yes, please. Let's have a motion. I mean, I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Oh, Maury has a question. I, I just had one question before we close it. Did the um, Would they like these big, very expensive books left back at ConCom so they might need them for contractors? The, the, uh, the filings, are you asking if we would like the filings would you back? like that back? If, if, uh, if you don't want them, we'll certainly take them. We can oh. always produce extras and our contractors have a copy on site anyway and a digital copy too on their computers. Well, it's just... That's I'm your not, preference. I'm not going to save your, your stuff from my, my archives, but <laughs> I just hate throwing away. I know they're very expensive and you need them. So I'll leave, I'll just leave mine at Hong Kong. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, we'll if uh, that's the case, we'll certainly reuse it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Carlo Hawk, second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. There's nothing further. All right, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Steve. Ben, aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Waldrop. Thank you, Mr. Dunk. Thank you very Thank much, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman and members of the commission. Have a good evening. Good night. All right, the next three hearings were continued hearings and they have been previously continued yet again. Therefore, we're at orders of conditions. First up, Edward A. and Leah A. Marcaselli, trustees, Leah A. Marcaselli Trust, 131 Bay Road, North Falmouth, Mass. Just in case you didn't know what state we're in. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, this was the additions on to the house. Um, we did confirm John O'Day and I are in agreement that it's a two to one or did confirm that it was two to one extra for Riverfront and he has provided a draft plan that I have approved um, by email with the additional plantings and they are located along the top of that that bank um so where the the lower part of the plantings were so he, he um augmented that and then added additional plantings in that area to to meet that riverfront requirement um so we will still condition it until we actually get that plan in but um i think that's all all that what uh all i had anyway All right, and I have a note that there should be two trees required. Oh, yeah. two trees. Yep, got it. All right, anybody have anything else they'd like to see in there? No. All right. Would you like- right, There's nothing else, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, issue an order of conditions as discussed. Gladfelder. Courtney, was that a second? Yes. Thank you. All right. So if there's nothing else, we're going to vote on an order of conditions. Betsy? Gladfelder, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Steve? Pat and I. 
It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Next up, 357 West Falmouth Highway, LC. 357 West Falmouth Highway, Falmouth, Massachusetts. Yes, this is the raise and the rebuild of that um, house in complete disarray and disrepair and um, disrepair in West Falmouth. They are giving us a 30 kind of about a 30 foot buffer in the back of that um, towards the vernal pool, which I really pushed for to, to kind of give that vernal pool more protection now that that whole um, that whole back part is being um, removed, all those invasives. Um, so I think it was a good plan. It was a good compromise with the, the new property owner since we didn't know where the buffer was. Um, I think it's a good, uh, a good meet in the middle kind of plan. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, for the record, uh, Maury is not on the forum. And I think um, I know that some of you were concerned, and I think they did confirm at the hearing that it was going to be an H20 load for that septic they, they tank, did. correct? Yes. Yeah, they did. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for a motion? I just want to make sure everybody's good. Anybody have any questions or comments? All right. Uh, Alyssa, Ms. Alyssa, Bergeron. I just had a note that we may want to require monitoring reports if you're yeah. interested. Can't hurt. Okay. All right, Betsy, you're up. Uh, so I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. If there is no further questions or comments, seeing none, we're voting. Betsy. I felt her eye. Courtney. Third eye. Matthew's eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Steve. Adam eye. With the quorum we have, it is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. And that's all, folks. I make a motion to adjourn. Wait a second. Okay. Jen had something. I just want to ask for patience while we train Laurie. Thank you. She's fine. That was Courtney coming to the office. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Gladfelter, aye. Third eye. Matthew's eye. O'Brien eye. Carlo Hawk's eye. Pat and I. This is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night.